Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Paranormal Roundtable, PRT for short. I'm your host, Josh Turner, also known as Wolf. And with me today is my uh, reluctant co-host, Anthony Moreno, who's angry at the world and me. Uh, say hello. Yeah, so nothing new, basically. Nothing. Well, there's nothing new under the sun, period. Yeah, your, but, especially, your attitude or, but especially me. Yeah, your attitude, Tony's attitude, Zane's attitude, it's all the same. Yeah. Um, I only just raised y'all. It's no biggie. <clears throat> so anyways, moving on from it what really I... It really isn't. I wish you'd stop going that, on and on and on and on about it. The sacrifices that I made as a as a, as a man. I was uh, just, why don't you just suffer in silence like, right. like 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 a big boy? Actually, I do suffer in silence. Good. My whole life. Well, okay. So 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 do it more right now. You're like so Sopranos. Yeah. <laughs> see, he's like, I suffered in silence. Yeah. She's like, he yeah, never stopped talking about it. Yeah, and then it cuts to her. She's like... <laughs> You, you would never shut up about it. <laughs> it was a junior, junior soprano. I yeah, suffered yeah, in junior silence. was in love with with the with that old lady, that, old, that woman. Yeah, yeah. He, he suffered in silence. Yeah, that's me right there. I suffer in silence until I talk about it every twenty minutes. So, anyways, folks, <laughs> I can tell you though, there's one person who doesn't suffer in silence. That's my brother. He stubs yeah. his toe. The whole neighborhood has to know about it because he's going to say expletive, expletive, expletive. Inanimate object. It's there. We ought to get him a herald for for any time he has a grievance, but like on Rome, <laughs> here ye, here ye. You know, j just some dude to stand out there on, on the street and voice all his grievances about everyone and everything all the time. In the year of our Lord, yeah, two thousand and twenty-two, Russell has broken his will to live by stubbing his toe, angry at the cat, blah, blah, blah. He's always angry at the pets or the, he's angry at the inanimate objects because he steps on them. But uh, anyway, enough, enough talk about that. Let's, let's, let's move on here. I don't want to bag on my brother. He can, be a, he can be a good guy back in 1998. So anyways, Josh Turner at Paranormal, let's see, Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. That is my email address. Send it to me. PRT Podcast, of course, is the, is the web address. You can go and check out whatever uh, we are actually, I was wrong. We're on 12 different platforms. Okay. We switched over to anchor. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're using anchor now as our podcast. host instead of lips and, and, uh, some of these podcast platforms, like they'll, they'll, they'll just pull your, your feed on, on their platform without you having to do anything. So, mm -hmm. and I had no idea. Now I am going to have to record a, uh, service announcement or something like that to, to, to you know, um, but other than that, I mean, you know, we're not really, we don't do a whole lot of advertising on the podcast, so we don't really make anything off of it. So I may have to start doing some plugs to try to keep it going so I can, so I can make it feasible to keep doing it. And the Patreon, of course, we have a Patreon, um, and we, we do appreciate anything you can do to help us right now in December. Uh, this will be aired on the 17th. That's not when we're recording it, but it'll, it'll be aired in a week or whatever. So here's what's going to happen. Um, we are doing a food drive. We try to help people. So any donations you can make uh, to the Patreon, um, what is it? Or you can donate to the PayPal. Yeah, uh, PayPal, Patreon, um, uh, join the live streams and just add your super chats or whatever. Or just go to the merchandise store and buy yourself something nice, whatever. Yeah, Christmas gifts. Yeah. We gave away over 60 shirts and hoodies, and we gave away about 15 caps. Um, and we're going to give away more. We're going to do another giveaway before the, the year is over with. Uh, if you're not paying attention, folks, YouTube, every Tuesday, right, Anthony? It's YouTube. Mm -hmm. We're doing a live stream every Tuesday. We go for, uh, on average, about three hours. And if you uh, go onto the live stream, we do it around 745 to 8 o'clock. It starts on YouTube. And what we do, uh, I go live, and we do a, we're doing a giveaway right now, and we're giving away one ounce silver coins of cryptids. I'm not kidding, chupacabra, Jersey Devil, Mothman, werewolf, Bigfoot. We're giving those away. We also do we drop the link to every show, whether it's the U, and it's always from the YouTube link. We drop it from the Tuesday show, uh, and we drop it from the Friday podcast, and we put it the YouTube link onto Paranormal Roundtable Group. And from there, if you leave a comment, you can win a free autographed book. And we'll send you some other swag too, some stickers and some other little trinkets, whatever. And 
So, but the only way to do that is to join the Paranormal Roundtable group. So if you're if you're a listener of the show, of the podcast, or any in any shape or form, join the Paranormal Roundtable group, and then leave a comment when we drop the YouTube link. Um, even if you don't listen to it on YouTube, you can still leave a, a comment about the show. Although we strongly encourage you to listen to uh, to watch the uh, Tuesday live stream that's YouTube exclusive, the Halloween show. It was a YouTube exclusive. The show with me, uh, Ken, Lyle, and Barton, YouTube exclusive. Um, also, the uh, uh, the Halloween leftover show, which we did some pretty pretty uh, stories, uh, pretty cool stories on there. Now I'm going to tell a story tonight. That maybe the people on the podcast haven't heard, but the people on YouTube may have. So, but and 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 it's going to be uh, about the Black Panther uh, people. Um, and there's one on there that I don't know if uh, everybody's heard it. So I'm going to go ahead and tell that tonight. If you have heard it, then I apologize. Oh well, just listen to it again. Okay, just deal with it. Just put on the big boy pants and listen to it again. Like we said, suffer in silence. Suffer in silence. There you go. I do get uh, people that like to to heckle me and mess with me and say mean things, but yet they watch every episode so they can do that. So thank you to all you uh, haters out there because you just can't get enough of listening to my voice, apparently. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you for that. So uh, here's our groups. Paranormal Encounters, which is Tony's group. Paranormal Roundtable, which is the main group. That's mine. And then I'm also a member of Quad Coalition of Sciences, which is growing by leaps and bounds. Nick Valente's group. Uh, I helped him grow that, and and me and Ryan are in that group. Uh, great group of people over there. Paranormal Lounge, which is my wife Nellie's group, and the Paranormal Prayer Group, uh, which she uh, created. And um, Dogman Werewolf Discussion, that's another group. Uh, I'm in there with Phil Stern, Della Carter. I'm an admin there. The North American Dogman Project Region 2, I'm an admin in that. And then Wolf uh, Turner of PRT Fan Page. I am an admin of that, but I don't send a lot of invites out to that because I still feel kind of weird about that because it's a fan page uh, group uh, that was created by Phil Stern, uh, Christopher Clough and Curtis Turner, Phil Stern. They're always making memes in there of me, uh, Barton, Ryan, everybody that's associated with PRT. They're always, you know, doing silly stuff. Nick Valente. Uh, now I'm also an admin of a Whisper to a Screen podcast with Ryan Paul Trimbley, which is Ryan, which is Ryan's uh, group, and then Paranormal Trucker, uh, the Paranormal Trucker Project podcast. Um, I'm going to start sending out some invites to that pretty soon because I want to help them grow. Um, I am an admin there, and uh, I do want to uh, see see it grow. Um, and I do like uh, the 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 truckers that, that you know. The, you guys, you listen to my shows like religiously, and I get a lot of support from you guys because. Uh, just like you guys support a coast to coast and you help them grow. I believe that you guys are going to be, uh, big and helping me grow. Um, you're out there on the road for long hours and, uh, you guys do actually, uh, contribute quite a lot to uh, helping us out. So go and join the paranormal trucker podcast. I'm going to start sending the links out to that so we can help them grow. Um, anyways, so we're going to move on. Everybody is is eligible if you leave a comment to win to win a book every week. We give away two a week, and that's like I said, the shows. But we're also doing giveaways during the live chat, the live stream on Tuesday. Now, if you miss the live stream on Tuesday on YouTube, you can also you can always go back in the archives on YouTube and watch it. You don't have to be in attendance, but you do have to be in attendance to win the prizes that we give away. And we are going to be doing another giveaway, another round of giveaways with the hats. We're going to start and we're going to show you guys on the next live stream coming up on Tuesday. Um, we're going to show you the hats. If I think by the time this airs, we probably have already have done that. But we'll, you know, go back and look and check it out and you'll see the different hats that we have. And we're going to do giveaways for those. Uh, so anyway, let's get started. Uh, we have some things to talk about. And this show... I've been wanting to do the show, and we had decided the last time we were going to do the vampire show, and this one, on, and it was on the YouTube live stream on a Tuesday, where it kind of got voted down that we were going to do. It was between vampires and Black Panther people. Uh, I, I don't know what to call them. They're shapeshifters. It's like Dogman, but Cat Man. 
I guess. Uh, but overwhelmingly, they tend to be black panthers. I, I, I don't, I don't know why that is. I can't tell you exactly why that is. I just know that that is. That's kind of what it is. Um, there is an area, okay, outside of my hometown. There's a cemetery out there, and I don't want people to go running around out there and messing with it. And then, next thing you know, the county's like, "Oh yeah, I heard Josh Turner were talking about it," and that's why they're all out there running around. And I got to answer for that because it's already happened with a couple other things. Devil's backbone comes to mind. That people going tromping around out there. Uh, a few people have gone out there and just, you know, hey, check it out, whatever. But I've had people go out there and mess around. Uh, one of the stories I have, though, comes from that cemetery. I'll start with that one. Uh, now, this is a cemetery that's located, I think, I think it's roughly uh, six miles outside of my hometown. Um, and it is, it is an old cemetery. And it's it's a it was a family cemetery, but there's other people that were buried there, and I don't I don't think anybody's been buried in a long time. But uh, there's some kids that I went to school with, and they and they're from a little town called Thrall. Now Anthony knows Thrall because it's yeah you if you blink and you miss it yeah you drive it's just a speed trap is all it is yeah I go through there to go to Thorndale to uh, go to the meat market, but anyway, uh, these guys I grew up with, they went to school in Thrall, I went to school in Taylor, and they had this, they knew the stories. This, this little area is in between Thrall and, and, and Taylor and Copeland, which is kind of like a little triangle. Um, but this place is kind of in between there. And they decided that they were going to go out there and have some fun and drink and shoot some guns. That was, you know, they went out there and they set some bottles up on some headstones. It is Texas, and this was back in the uh, uh, early 90s, and they were like, hey, let's go out here and let's shoot guns. And it always makes for a good combination, getting drunk and shooting firearms, <laughs> as well as uh, getting drunk and driving, too. That's a great idea. Uh, uh, he's being facetious, folks. That's not a, f- That's a terrible idea. Please don't do that. You sound like my lady. As a matter of fact... You should, we should probably get drunk and drive and shoot guns. Okay. Well, you know what? If you drive out there in the country, you will see stop signs and yield signs peppered with bullet holes and shotgun. Uh, by drunk drivers by drunk. <laughs> with, with guns. With buckshot. Yeah. And you'll see it. I mean, Anthony, you know I'm not joking. Like all those no, signs yeah. out there are just destroyed yeah. by... I saw one the other day outside of Pflugerville near Row Lane. It was like completely bent backwards like somebody had just shot it all. The It must have been there for a while. Don't need no stop signs when you're I mean, they, to do that, all that far damage. removed from civilization. I mean, it looked like just, they were blowing it away with 308s. Stop signs in the country are just the man's way of keeping us country folk down. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what it is. Yeah, but well, anyway, yeah. Th- th- so these people were, were out there. They were shooting guns, and this one one guy, he's now deceased. He was a good friend of mine. I, I knew him for years. He was actually from Thorndale. But uh, they were out there running around, and and I knew these kids. You know, they were about my age, and they'd come into Taylor, to, in the big thriving metropolis of Taylor, to party with us sometimes. And uh, so they they had a crazy story to tell us. We, we, were, we were all hanging out one day at this place called The Circle. And Anthony, you know where that's at, right outside of Taylor. Yeah. And so we all were getting drunk, and some of these guys from Thrall came in, and they started telling us, "Hey, we, you know, we went out to such and such cemetery, um, and they said we were out there popping caps. And next thing you know, something strange happened. We heard something shake by the fence. Um, there was a dilapidated uh, uh, barbed wire, like a like right the adjacent property. There was like a you know, like a dilapidated, and they heard something shaking." And there's like overgrown br- uh, brush and everything. And uh, they said that they, that they heard a, a growl, like a loud growl. And when they turned and looked, and I've, I've heard this story a long time ago. and But I did some more research on it just to make sure I was getting the story correctly. Got in touch with one of them uh, just a couple months back when I started to do this episode. And, and the story never changed. It was pretty much the same. I was thinking, man, it may be... Years go by, they, they give you a different version. Now, he was pretty adamant this was this is what happened. It was the same version of it. Um, what looked like a black cat. Now, the way they described the cat, though, wasn't like a panther. Like, you know how you see that sleek look on the head, and it looks like a, like a black panther. Now, we have black panthers in, in Texas. Yeah. You know? And I actually was just on the phone with Ken Gerhardt and Barton Nunley earlier today, and we were talking about something really weird. This is going to come up eventually, too. 
that Letitia Nunley saw recently after the tornadoes in, in Kentucky. Please pray for those people. But but uh, we were talking with, with Ken, and he said, well, you know, Jaguars are typically further south. I agree to an extent, but I've gotten so many reports of Jaguars, and in particular black ones, because that is what a Black Panther is, is a black-coated Jaguar. If you get up close to it, you can see the spots on it. There's one in, New, uh, what is it, where we go in New Braunfels? Yeah. There's a zoo out there we've been to a couple times. I love uh-huh. to go out there. And there, there's a big, beautiful one out there, big old male. And and he just kind of hangs out. And you can go right up to him, just a few feet away from him, and you can see the spots up close. But he looks black. Now, if he was 50 yards away, he'd look black. If he was in, in, in the darkness, he'd look black. Um, but when you get up close, you can kind of see it. Now, this is what happened. They said that th- this thing, though, looked like – you know how a house cat looks – uh, kind of like Martis, our cat. That's how yeah. I would think it would, you know, but a little longer hair. But it was gigantic. And this thing went through the barbed wire fence and came right up to the other side and then leaped, leapt over the other fence and was right there in the cemetery with them. And, and then it went pop and it was upright. Like, like it, there was a popping noise or it just popped up yeah, on two Yeah, that, that both. Like it just kind of was like poof and it was there. And it, and then a couple of them didn't even realize that they – there was four four guys and two girls. They didn't even realize that it was there. And, uh, two of them did and they started getting the other people's attention because two of them saw uh, the thing jump. Like, you know, and like I said, one of them's deceased now. He died in, in a car wreck a long time ago. But they told me this story and I asked this other guy and I'll, I'll call him John. And I think you might actually know him, Anthony. Uh, he's friends with me and Daniel. So he came like 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 screaming, hey, 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 because he was actually doing his business by a tree. <laughs> and he came running over there and he said, there's something there. And then this thing kind of went behind a tree and they didn't see it. Now, he claims that it had yellow glowing eyes. Okay. Now, that was a story. That, that was the thing I asked John about. I said, are you sure – that he says, I'm positive. This was, you know, years ago. It was like 1991. He's like, I'll never forget it. And he said it, but it, but it looked like a, like a furried house cat, not like fur blown all over the place. Like it was real thick, not like a Norwegian, you know, war cat or whatever they call it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But like, you know, it, you know, like it looked like a, a house cat of a house cat. He goes, it didn't look like a panther, but it was a black cat. And he goes, and I saw the hand wrap around the tree. And he goes, it was like a claw and it was black. And he goes, and I had a little crappy flashlight, you know. And so I walked back to the car and nobody could see it. And they kept looking and going, oh, I don't really see it. Do you see it? And they were debating about whether they could see it or not. And he goes, I saw it. It was right there. And the guy that, that was from Thorndale's was, was closest to him. He saw it too. So he, he, they went and they got the flashlight and they turned the, the, their, their truck and pointed the lights at the thing. So it just kind of stayed behind the tree. Well, then they got the bright idea. Let's throw bottles at it. So Always we'll, a good idea. Always a good idea. Just like the guns. Yeah. And so they, they they were wanting to shoot at it. And one of the girls said, no, that's not a good idea. Because what if you wound it? And then, so then one of them just throws a bottle. Well, the next thing you know, they start shooting in the direction of this thing. It jumps out from behind the tree. And it does come out, okay, and it goes away from them. It's going away from them, not trying to engage them or attack anybody. And it jumped out like like a like a cat, like a regular cat. But the front part of the cat, where the shoulders and everything should have been, did not look correct. It looked like man's arms. Now, two of the the, the people, the two females, absolutely uh, said that that's what they saw. Now, there was another guy that had a better vantage point, and he claims he couldn't see anything unusual at that point. But it eventually got to the fence line, and as they were, as they had unloaded, they had two pistols. As they had unloaded them, both of them being revolvers, they had to reload. While, it was, while they were reloading, this thing turned, got up behind one of the, the tall uh, headstones, and then decided that it wanted to come toward them. Uh, it didn't jump back down on all fours. It just began to walk quickly toward them on what looked like backward bent hawks, like on its legs. It were just like a dog man, you know. And they said that it didn't roar or do anything, you know, like magical, but it had yellow glowing eyes and it just started walking toward them. And they said that it was making a clicking sound, 
And I don't know what that meant. They just said it sounded like it was making a clicking sound. And they thought that maybe it was the way it was moving. The hips were clicking or something. Yeah. Um, the legs were very muscular. They shined the light right on it, and it didn't flinch. The light didn't make it recoil. It didn't put its arm up and try to block the light. They all got a very good look at it. And I've talked to three people about this. Uh, I, I did know at the time, I did talk to three people when it first happened. We were out the circle. And then I talked to two of those people, then one other that I hadn't talked to before. And that was about two months ago. Back in October, because I was going to do uh, the the show in October, and I'm, I know you remember Anthony, the whirlwind October, all the yeah. talking. I was on the phone like every day for two hours. Um, so I was going over my notes, and I talked to one of the females, who she said that she had nightmares for years about it, and that and then shortly after that, and I apologize to you, ma'am. Um, she says she started having them again after we talked about it. I didn't, that wasn't my intention. Um, but, you know, it, it is a terrifying thing. And then they all ran back to the vehicles. Uh, one of them actually dropped his pistol. Um, and then a few days later, he managed to talk his friend into going back and with him and getting it. Um, now here's what happened. When he went back to get the gun, they looked and they saw something up in a tree that looked like a black cat, like asleep. They couldn't see the back end of it because it was summertime and it was a lot of overgrowth. And they said that he saw something that looked like like up in a tree. Like and it wasn't at the cemetery. It was when they were driving off and they went right by it. And he goes, look at that right there. And he points and they see this thing sleeping up in a tree that looked like a giant cat. Now I said, how tall, how big do you think it was? He said, probably... Six and a half feet. It wasn't like a giant animal or creature or whatever. It wasn't like eight feet tall. It wasn't even a seven and a half foot tall. And, and it wasn't overly muscular built. He said if you just took a house cat and you drew it like a cartoon. Yeah. And you turn and you put it on two legs, you know. Yeah, like uh, an anthropomorphized. Is that the yeah. Word? Yeah. The, the shoulders weren't overly muscular, but it looked like a house cat that had been, you know, to, to enormous size, yeah. you know, about 250 pounds, you know, and it had the arms and, and, and up of the, of, of a man, upper body was kind of small and, and not real muscular, but the legs were really big, like very muscular. This thing could leap, obviously. And when they got back to their car, they just saw it standing in the cemetery. It didn't run after them. It didn't do anything. They just saw the yellow glowing eyes and they took off in two different vehicles and they were gone. Uh, and then I think it was not the next day, but the day after he went back and he found his his firearm. Um, they one of them was pretty convinced that he might have hit it, yeah. but it didn't do anything, didn't affect it. Um, so that that's a weird story. Now here's a sidelight to that. I had some friends that were going through there to investigate. The, uh, shortly after this incident, they were from Bartlett. Now Bartlett's a little town outside of Taylor too. Um, these are all like little suburbs of a little small town, which Taylor is really just kind of a suburb of Austin. So you can imagine these are really small little towns. But one one of my friends from there, and I'm still friends with him to this day, um, he went out there to look. And of course, you know, him and his buddies, they're always armed to the teeth. So they went out there and they're like, all right, we're going to find this. You know, we're going to uh, and And one of the guys I went to high school with, who uh, was a good friend of mine, he used to go to school in Bartlett with those guys. And of course he told them, and then they all went out there on a little expedition. Well, they went out there at night and they did see, they did run across a black Panther and it was like running in, in a ditch alongside their vehicle for like a split second. They were like, Hey, there it is. And then it took off into the brush. They didn't get a good look at the head, but here's what's weird. The body that they described didn't, it just looked like a black panther it didn't look like a black house cat like the way these people described and it didn't have long hair but they didn't get a good look at the head because it was from behind and then it slunk into the, uh, the into the brush and went underneath uh, uh barbed wire you know that area it's just full of overgrown trees and everything did they see it on two legs or on four they saw it on four they didn't see anything but a black panther now here's the big question is there a black panther that's roaming around out there in the same, like maybe a mile and a half up the road from that, where they saw this black, as you call it, anthropomorphic cat person. 
two different things, it's the same thing, or was it shifting into something? I mean, what what are we dealing with? Because that that's the big question. That's what made me really. And I'll, I'll tell you, my friends, my friend David, he, he told me that I know he's not lying. I know they saw it. Um, now, now I had heard that story, and I called him back and said, "Hey, you know, and just to make sure, you know, to make sure that it wasn't that I wasn't wrong about the story, and I retell it, and then they listen, and go, that ain't true. You're not correct, you know." <laughs> Especially with his brother, who's the biggest skeptic. They lived in a haunted house uh, out there near uh, Copeland, and and I was in that house one time, and I literally felt like something grabbed my neck. And this dude talking about, oh, there's nothing here. I'm not here. My wife sees shadows come out of the wall. I don't know. He's one of those kind of people. The ghost could literally be like giving him purple nurples, and he's denying that it's happening. The kind of kid who still always thought his whole life that if you pull the blankets over your head, then they can't get you. <laughs> Never. Yeah, demonic yeah. infestation. Blanket. Protecting kids since the 1800s. Got a divine force field on it that, yeah. that prevents uh, ghosts Absolutely. and demons from getting you. But, uh, so that, that's that story and the, or those stories and we'll move on to what do you got? You can, you know, you can choose your dealer's choice here, I guess. Well, uh, one thing I wanted to add to that, that story is that, uh, that clicking noise is kind of interesting to me and the fact that they heard it whenever this thing was, uh, going towards them now, like regular house cats, they'll, they'll, they'll make a, uh, like a clicking noise, but it, it can also be kind of like a chirping noise. But it, that they make that noise uh, whenever they're trying to ambush something, like right before the, they're about to pounce. Like it, that, that noise is a, is like a sign of like potential aggression. And there's actually a neurological reason that they make that noise. And I, I can't remember all the de- details for it, but, but in a nutshell, it's like uh, that noise is a reaction to them fighting their instinct to pounce right then and there because they have to wait for the right moment. And they're they're so like full of this this like energy for pouncing on their prey that you know for an animal it's hard to just kind of sit there and be patient and wait for it. So that noise is kind of it's almost like a neurological tick, you know, like like and people have those too. Like whenever people are under pressure or nervous or anxious, you know, they'll they'll have like certain some people you know will have like certain ticks, like either speech or maybe they're fidgeting or they move a certain way. You know, it's like a reaction to, I don't know, the, the, that kind of pressure. That's crazy. It, it, dude, I, that's weird. Our cats, I've never heard them do that. I've heard pans or do it, uh, like whenever I'm, I'm playing with him with a toy, and if it's a toy that he's really interested in, he'll just kind of, he'll kind of look out of it for a minute, and he'll follow it with his head, you know, left and right, up and down. And, and the whole time, he's just kind of waiting for the right moment to, to strike at it. And, but like in the meantime, he'll make like this clicking noise. It's not like a regular thing he does. He's just done it in the past. I've never heard him do that. And uh, Martis has done it too. And folks, I I, I tell you this because I'm not, I wasn't a cat person. I I never had house cats since I was little. Um, We had them like out in the country. They were kind of wild. You know, you couldn't really, well, I could pick them one or two of them up, but most of them you couldn't touch or pick up or be around them. But that's very interesting because, uh, so, so, okay. Now that's weird. Okay. So let me ask you this because I didn't know that what you just said. I actually did not know that. No, yeah. um, I don't. I usually know everything, but today yeah, me I, too. I learned something from you, which is weird that I ever learned anything from you. But you know, th- it that thing might have been ready to attack these people. Yeah, I mean, like that. That's to me. That's what that clicking noise uh, it signifies. Wow. Oh man! And I mean that. That's like <laughs> oh, if dude. you hear a cat do that. That's exactly. What, it, it, it's kind of like a like a, like a clicking slash like kind of Morse code type noise. Swarny. <laughs> so, so all these years, and I never knew. They told me that I never knew that. I never bothered to look that up. Yeah. That's so weird. Well, I, that's crazy. That that that's. Uh, wow, I didn't even know that. And now, because I've only had Panzer and Martis, and I haven't had them for a long, long time. Well, we've had Martis for what since two things the Thanksgiving before last. Yeah. So two years, you know, or uh, Panzer. Panzer, yeah. And then we got Martis uh, back in the summer. What's crazy, I mean, like, you know, my brother had a couple different cats and I never, they, they, you know, one of them passed away from cancer, poor thing. And then the other one he had, he finally had to get rid of it because he was always gone, wouldn't take care of it. And it was me and Scorpion and, and Squid taking care of it all the time. And uh, I don't ever remember them making that noise. But anyway, that that that's really that's really interesting because I had no freaking idea. Honestly, that's crazy. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think it, it's like a reg- – I mean, of course, it depends from cat to cat. and Animals are different, but uh, I don't think it's like a regular uh, common thing that they do. Um, it's just like when they're really trying to, like, wait for the right moment to pounce and and, it, and they're, they're, they're having to – they're having to really hold, hold themselves, themselves back, back, you know, and, and be patient and, and be smart. It's like it's – they don't like doing that. So that chirping, clicking noise with their mouths is a reaction to it. So so now I know that if I hear Martis or Pans are doing that, I know to strike first. What I do, though, is I take that stick with the mouse mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sling it so he'll, they, they won't jump on me and, and try to claw me. That, that'll be – that'll be, and I'll, then I'll run. I'll make a run for it. Yeah, no, I just keep a water bottle in, in my room and like I'll, I'll, I'll spray the, uh, Martis with it whenever he gets up on places that he, he doesn't want to be or I don't want him to be. What's crazy, though, is that they, that they think they're dogs. Yeah. When the dogs bark, when somebody knocks on the door, they start going rah, 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 like they're trying to do, like they're trying to bark. It's so weird. Yeah. But uh, you know, when you raise them all together, I guess that's what happens. So moving on, we got it. We got some other stories here. What which one do you want to get into? Uh, what about the one in uh, Lafayette? Yeah, that one's pretty interesting. Uh, so that one was on I ten, and it was going uh, west to east, and they were going through Lafayette. And I think they were either, I think they were either right before they got to Lafayette or they were past Lafayette and they saw the weirdest thing. I mean, it was really, it was really weird. We know alligators live in, uh, Louisiana, yeah. but I don't know about how many alligators, like, I don't know about them in the middle of the state. I've not really heard a lot about them being in the middle of the state, typically around the bayou area, stuff like that. But uh, this this thing was down eating something that they said it looked like either a giant lizard or some sort of small alligator. And it was on the side of the road. And at first it was like kind of partway, like the, the, the tail end, the butt of it, you know, the, 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 the middle backside was part, partway in the road. And it was chowing down on this thing. And it's just, this thing was like still alive, whatever it was eating. Um, I don't want to say it was an alligator because they didn't say it was an alligator. They said it was like a giant reptile of some kind that may have been an alligator. Uh, and then when the light shined on it, it turned and kind of like like made a, you know, how that cats turn. They open their mouth real wide, kind of like they're aggravated. Yeah. And then they said that it grabbed the, 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 the meal and had it in its mouth and was moving toward like going toward the, the bush, you know. And it turned, and then at the last second, it stood up, and it still had this thing, or at least part of it, in its mouth. The thing was obviously dead at that point, and it was like holding the tail of whatever it was that it was eating in its left hand. And so this thing was standing up on its hind legs, and they said it was probably almost seven foot tall, um, and they said that they they were driving by in a minivan, and it was like a whole family. And they saw it, and the guy was in the the in the passenger side, and the wife was actually driving. His wife was driving, and there were three kids, and they were asleep. But one of the kids, the oldest teenage son, woke up and was like, "What the heck is that?" And they kind of the other kids all kind of woke up, and they looked as they drove right by it, and they saw this thing in its mouth, and it was kind of like 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 hunch hun- like it was uh, hunkering down, like lowering itself. Yeah. And uh, they drove by it, and they said that it. And there again, it had yellow eyes, um, but it did. It wasn't like they were glowing like like balls of fire or whatever. But it was yellow, and uh, it had this thing in its mouth. And they thought this is the weirdest thing they'd ever seen was this panther looking creature on two legs. Now I had another one. Uh, this one was right outside of Beaumont, and I'll throw this one in there. Uh, it's 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 also not super long, but it is pretty scary. This guy was a trucker. And uh, he pulled his truck off to the side of the road, and he had to check something. Um, one of the back doors had had come open, you know, like it, it had flung open or whatever, because they didn't close it right. And he was like, I was so tired. I dropped my load, you know, and I was ready to go. I got my load. I was ready to go. And he was driving out of Beaumont, and he goes, I got about, you know, 15 miles down the road, and I was out of, out of town, you know. And uh, same thing. You know, I think, he, I think it was I-10 where he was on. And uh, he got – you know, further down the highway. And uh, he says, man, I had to stop and, and close the, you know, there was a, a a vehicle that went up next to him and told him, Hey, your door, you know, and he goes, I was so tired. He goes, I shouldn't have been driving. And he pulled over, you know, the desolate highway, you know, there wasn't nobody coming. It's three in the morning. 
he gets out, goes into the back to look, and he hears, you know how you were talking about that? That makes so much sense when you're talking about that clicking sound because he hears like a, a, first he hears like what he thought were claws on pavement. And then he heard like a clicking sound and he turns and he says, there's this thing hunched down like a slope on a sloping kind of a hill right there, you know, like a ditch. And he said it was, he just saw the top of the head and he thought, what is that? And he thought, oh, that's a black panther. It looked like a panther. And he said, he he goes, whoa. And then he said, right then it stood up. It just like stood up and then kind of hunched down again. And he thought, what did I just see? Did that thing literally just stand up on two legs? Then he started to take it in as he closed the gate, the, the, the back of the trailer real quick. He was running back to the front of his truck. He said this thing came around the, the, the side of his truck and it was on all fours, but it was kind of like how if a person got down and was moving on all fours, but they had like canine or feline type back legs. And he said, I could see it in my, and I, I closed the door, I could see it right in my rearview mirror. And he goes, and then as I began to take off, you know, you're not going to take off real fast in the semi. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm switching gears, trying to get it going, you know, driving, whatever. And this thing is running alongside my vehicle. And then it stood up and he goes, and then it jumped up onto the side of his truck. And, you know, what gave it away was a clicking sound that he had heard. And so then when you said that about them pouncing, that makes a lot of sense. That's crazy. Um, but he said that this thing kind of held on for a second. And then as he got going, it just dro- it dro- it dropped off and he could see it in the rearview mirror. And he said the whole time he was driving away until it became really small in his rearview mirror, it just stood there. And he said, and I said, now, did it stand there on all fours? He goes, no. He goes, it stood there like a man, like a hu- like a human would stand there just like, huh. You know, like it was kind of myth that, that it missed its target, you know? Yeah. And uh, he said, you know, he goes, part of it too, I may have attracted it because I was like cussing and griping. I was having to go and mess with this and I've been, I've been on the road and he goes, so, you know, I got further down the road. Once I hit Louisiana, he goes, first thing I did was go to sleep. I just went and I, I, I found a, a, a truck stop, went to sleep. And uh, he goes, dude, I, I thought, man, I woke up the next day thinking maybe it was just a dream, you know, maybe I just dreamed that that thing was there, you know? Um, here's the thing. He gave me that story like way back in like February, March, uh, a couple months later in the, in the, in the late spring, the same guy hit me up and he said, let me tell you something about that. He goes, I was driving through Dallas area near, near the DFW area. And he said, I was out, you know, just, just, just going past West of Dallas or uh, East of Dallas. And he said, and I pulled off into a truck stop. And he said, I was sitting there and I ran into a friend of mine and he, that I'd seen on the road a few times, you know, they get to know each other. He's a 25 year truck driver. And he sometimes just sees the same people, you know, working in different companies, whatever. And he said that this guy used to work with him and he had a guy with him and he had told that guy the story. He goes, I saw this weird black Panther. And this guy that was with that dude told him, he goes, I've seen a black Panther one time when I was out in Arizona. Uh, and he said it was near Sedona. And Sedona's a weird town. Anyway, it's a weird city. A lot of weird energy there. And he goes, this thing ran out in front of my truck. He goes, I nearly wrecked. I was going to just, you know, I, I braced to hit it because I was like, I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, swerve. And he goes, I swerved some. And I thought, I'm not going to just totally jackknife myself to kill myself to, 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 to avoid hitting it. He said the thing got down and went and, and he completely went over the top of it. Like it was, he didn't feel anything. Like he just drove through it? No, he didn't drive through it. Like it got down. Like oh, oh okay. it flattened okay. itself out. And he goes, and it did it so fast. It was like right there. And he goes, I'm gonna hit it. He goes, I was thinking about swerving. I did a little, and then I said, No, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna wreck, you know. So he just said, I'm just gonna brace for impact. He goes, but it was on all, it was on two legs. You know, it walked out in front of his 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 truck. He said, then all of a sudden it went woo, like like it just went flat onto the ground. He said, then he went over it and he goes, then I look back in my rear view mirror and I see it pop up and then run down the hill like, like a little, like a little, uh, slope. And then it was gone into the desert. So that's weird. And he said, but he said, he goes, he goes, yeah, I goes that that's kind of black Panther. I saw, I don't know if it was. And so then the guy that gave me the story, he said, that's, that's what I saw. He goes, I saw something on two legs. He goes, you're kidding me. He goes, no, he goes, get out of here. He goes, no, for real. I saw that. Uh, so you got two guys that had close encounters with black Panther type people. Uh, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what that is or what they are, 
Um, but there's obviously something going on there. Here's another story. And I told, I told this one on the, uh, you, the YouTube Tuesday live stream. I'm going to tell it again for those who haven't heard it, but th- these people th- they, going back to that area, kind of close to that cemetery, I think it's about five miles from there. I think that's what it was. I went and I looked and, and it's, and it is, it's a few miles up the road. About a mile and a half, though, from a farm out there where I got stories about a Black Panther that I told way back, if you go back in the archives of the show, I don't remember which episode, but this thing grabbed uh, a a lamb and climbed, it scaled up a fence and was gone. And you could see the the back muscles and the upper body was like a man climbing the fence. It was like a panther. When he hit the fence, it climbed it up it like, like like a man with the back legs of a cat. So this guy saw that and he took a shot at it and he said he didn't think he hit it, but it was like gone, like boom. And then he lost his lamb. Um, so, but here's what happened. Now I'm going to be honest. These people were leaving a bar and they had been drinking a little bit, but they were, they told me, look, we weren't drunk. We weren't smashed. He's like, I was dating this girl at the time, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I've talked to both of them. Um, since then they were driving down that road. Okay. Now, I know exactly where this road is at. I've been down that road many, many times, and, and they, they literally were coming around this curve. I know where this is at, too, and there's a ditch right there, and they said that there was what looked like a black panther on two legs, same thing, lower body, cat-like, upper body, man-like, black, had the black panther head, and it was like running along in the ditch alongside the road waving, waving at them. Like he was trying to get their attention. Maybe he was hitchhiking. Yeah, and they look over and she's like, what the, you know, and then she asked him, she's like, did you see that? He goes, yeah, I don't know what that SH whatever is, but I ain't stopping. And he's she's, he's like, what the heck is that? But, you know, with expletives. And he goes, dude, I was in shock. She was in shock. He goes, but it looked like literally like a Black Panther man running alongside, trying to wave us down, trying to get our attention. Now, the thing is, I had gotten a story of a guy who was on a motorcycle going down that same road, and he saw something that was kind of wriggling around in the road that looked like a man and a panther were in the life or death struggle to become one another. That's the way he described it. What? Yeah. And so when I asked him about that, he goes, dude, I was I was driving, and I saw it up, up ahead, and I thought, is this, what is that, like a weird-looking snake? But he goes, but I saw appendages or something. And as I got closer, I saw a, a, what looked like a man, but part of him looked like a, a cat. And he goes, what the heck is that? So he goes, so I just went around it real quick. And when I did, he goes, the, I, I see the human-like arm like lunge out toward my, my, uh, my, my, my bike. And he goes, I just gunned it, dude. I was like, what the heck am I looking at, dude? And he said, next thing you know, I'm looking in my mirrors and I see this thing kind of standing up and becoming like – panther like you know like a like a like a cat yeah like like shape shifting yeah oh yeah that's what it that seemed like you know now a buddy of ours lives up in fort worth and i know who you know who this is um i don't want to give it away but he but his uh cousin who, who died years ago um he died he was he, he drank a lot i'm not gonna lie but this happened in thorndale and he was walking up the road and he saw something similar to that on that that road right there right out right off of 79 like there's a parallel road that run, then there's like a neighborhood right back there when you right when you're going outside of Thorndale, and he was coming back from Brush Creek Bar, where my my cousin Muff always goes in there and drinks, and uh, he was walking up that road and he saw something similar to that, but it was a canid and a, and a man like like stretched out along the road. He's like he was stretched out the the full length of the road, like you know the width of the road. Yeah. And he said it had to have been seven foot long, and there was like this elongated body, and it was becoming something. And he said that the head was becoming canine, and he's you know, and he was scared to death, and so he ran past it real fast. And he said the thing was kind of going like ah, like making a weird noise. Um, so who knows? I mean, did did this guy on the bike see this thing transforming? And the people here's my theory: the people that were driving by that saw that panther thing on the side of the road waving him down maybe that thing, maybe that was a guy thinking that that he was still in the, human the, that he was a human still yeah and yeah. he was like hey i need help you know and uh the weird thing is it didn't have any clothes 
You know, like, I mean, I asked them that it's, as a, I was like, this is going to sound weird or funny, but did they have clothes? And they were like, no. So like, if you were thinking you're a guy, you're going to be running along nude, trying to wave somebody down. Like, Hey, I need help. You know? And then you trick them. And then you, what do you do? You pounce on them or whatever. I don't know. Maybe he's just not very smart. <laughs> I mean, the, the simplest answer is usually the correct one. <laughs> so we just go. Maybe with- he's like, he, he was in his, his, uh, black Panther person form. And then just forgot, and, and and he's trying to hit Chike, and he's like, "Why? Why is everyone so scared of me?" What? And he looks down, and is like, "Oh, oh yeah, that's crap! Right. I didn't even." Remember. I knew I was forgetting something. I, I knew. Oh, dang it! All right, let me take care of this real quick. Should have wore pants if I was going to wave someone yeah. down and get in their vehicle. To I need eat to. I, I need to start keeping a change of clothes in a backpack if I'm going to be doing all this shape shifting stuff. So I'm saying. So I, I mean, need, that's. You know, I mean, I get a lot of these weird stories. Um, not nearly as prevalent as the dog man stories, but they exist. I mean, I got one out there near Alpine, Texas, you know, and two of them, like that one there and there, and then one near the big, big bend area in that West Texas area. Um, and, and I can get into those at some point, but what we got some more. What do you got? Do you want to, these are the ones that you personally wanted to ask me about. Okay. Well, what about the, the, the Craigslist story? Oh, okay. Yes. This one. Now, this one, I, I can't remember if I told it on Halloween or not, but if I did, it was on YouTube, and a lot of people that don't, don't that are, a lot of our audience listens to YouTube, a lot of them don't. So, um, if you're just a strictly a podcast person, you probably have not heard this story. This one, this one happened to a guy, he was a Fort Hood soldier in Killeen, and what he did was, he, he was moving off of the base, if I remember correctly, he was moving off of the base and he wanted to uh, move in with his uh, girlfriend at the time, who's now he's married to now. And uh, they they were they were like, hey, we're going to get a, get an apartment together, whatever. So he had to get bedroom set, things like that. So this guy tells him, yeah, I got a bed or whatever. I'm going to sell you. Um, or maybe it was a dresser or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was some furniture for, for the bedroom. And uh, he said, yeah. And so he went to Craigslist and he found like a really good deal. And this guy said, meet me at this location. Well, the store was a store that was closed. So he meets him late and, and he shows up at like, you know, guy goes, oh, I work, I, I, I work, I get off late, you know, after 11, I work the swing shift. So can you meet me after 11? He goes, yeah, it's a little bit late, but you know, for the price, you know, I'll do it. It's also a red flag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know a lot of horror stories from uh, Craigslist. Uh, but anyway, th- this 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 story was uh, messed up. So he goes out there to meet this guy, and then he drove to Temple. Now Temple's outside of Austin. You know, I don't know how many miles is it? Fifty miles, maybe. Probably. Yeah. So so anyway, in in Colleen is probably forty five, fifty miles. So anyway, he drives from Colleen to, to right outside of Temple to meet this guy at a convenience store that was closed. Now I can't remember if it was like it was defunct or if it was closed or whatever, but. Uh, he goes out there and he he's waiting and he's waiting and he doesn't does nobody shows up so he's like you know what I gotta use the bathroom so he goes around the side of the building behind a trash can he goes to, to take a leak and there again he hears this noise um, he didn't describe it as a clicking but he heard like a noise of like something moving like you know and then he heard like what was like a pop and he thought what the heck was that like if somebody were to crack crack a knuckle or something and he said that he turned. And he thought he saw something move really quick behind, you know how they have those dumpsters, they have the little fence around them, you know? Yeah. He thought he saw something move behind that real quick and, you know, go in his peripheral. And he thought, okay, now I'm freaked out. So he goes back to his, uh, to his vehicle, calls the guy who's supposed to be there, right? And the guy says, oh, I'm on my way. I'm running a little bit late. He goes, oh, okay, all right. Um, and so then eventually uh, it doesn't work out. The guy doesn't show up. So he leaves and he, and he's like, I guess like an hour later or something, the guy says, Hey, I'm here, man. I'm really sorry, dude. You know, can you come back? And he says, well, I'm already at home. I really don't want to have to drive all the way back out there. And the guy says, well, okay, well, and I just, I guess the deal's off then whatever. And he's like, well, you know, this is really aggravating. Um, but he actually lied to the guy. He told him I'm already back at home, you know, and he was hoping that maybe he the guy would give him a better, you know, cut him a deal or whatever. Um, cause the guy said he was moving. You know, so he was selling everything and he said, it's, it's, it is kind of a hassle for me. You know, if you throw me, throw me a little bit off of what, you know, you're selling me, um, you know, I'll, for my gas money to drive back out there. And he said, in reality, he goes, I was only about halfway. 
Uh, and so I said, well, there you go right there. You lied to the guy, so that's why it happened. But <laughs> so, yeah. so karma. Anyway, karma, you know. But but anyway, you know, it, it would be aggravating, though. You're sitting there waiting and, and nothing, and then the person doesn't show up, you know. And he, he said, I just couldn't stop thinking about what I saw. You know, I thought, this is weird. He said, and then I did see a vehicle, you know, on the other side of the parking lot. He goes, and I went over to that vehicle. They said it was like a red truck or whatever, but there was nothing. There was nobody in it. And he thought, well, it's probably one of the workers just left their vehicle overnight or something. So he says he comes back. The same vehicle is there, the the, the truck, um, but there's nobody there. And he's like, why is this guy messing with me? He's like, I'm at this particular store, the coordinates you gave me. And the guy says, yeah, 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 I'm here. I'm here. And he goes, okay, all right. So well, he, go, he goes, so I go to get out. The guy told him that he was there and he's like, he's, you know, there, there is a kind of a back side to it. So he thought, you know, there's like kind of a little drive that goes around the back. It's like gravel. So he goes over there and starts walking around the other side to see if maybe the guy's parked back there. Like the guy said, I'm over here by the back, you know. And uh, next thing you know, he's seeing something in the darkness and he's like, hello, is that you? And he says the guy's name, you know, the guy's name was Darren or something. And he said that th there was nothing. He just saw like something kind of moving in the darkness he said, next thing you know, he sees what looks like the the front part of the face, like the muzzle of like a cat looking thing. And he's like, what the heck is that? And then he sees like the the legs. He sees like like what looks kind of like the, the feet, like paws, you know? And he's like, oh no, what the heck is that? And then, and then he sees more of it. Like it steps out of the darkness just enough in the light where he could see that it was not a human. And so he was like, oh, my gosh. So he immediately just starts to back away slowly. Then he turns and runs and goes to his vehicle. This thing gave chase. And uh, it was on two legs. You know, it went straight toward him. And uh, if I remember correctly, like, I think, he, I think it went under his car. Like, when he got in the car, like, it went up under it or whatever. Or not his car, his uh, truck. And, like, it was underneath the truck, and he felt the truck kind of lift up. And then he backed out, and the thing, like like, turned and was like, kind of running back toward the back again. And he said he couldn't remember if he like maybe hit it when he, when he was backing out or what, because I, I was just, you know how things happen so fast. He's like, I don't remember the details. I just got the heck out of there. And I thought, dude, you know, and so he started calling that guy. Guy never answered again. There was no, you know, and then eventually the phone was just, there was no service. There was no, you know, the number was, I mean, it's probably just a throwaway phone or something. So you got to wonder what that was. What was that guy, the cat thingy? Was that was that him? I mean, was he setting this guy up to be dinner? <laughs> you know, what was he doing? Like, I mean, what was that? And did that truck belong to that guy? That or you yeah. know, or was he setting him up to be killed by this thing? Or I mean, I don't know. It was such a weird story. Or maybe he was just playing late the first time. Actually, showed up there the second time. Called the guy. To, told him, "Hey, I'm here." And then he saw the same thing, that, that cat, and just bolted. There you go. There's another possibility. Yeah. So, you know, th that thing was there, and, and he goes, there was no other vehicle in the parking lot. You know, I mean, it was it was just a crazy story, you know. Uh, lesson learned, don't buy things and show up at 11 o'clock by yourself at, a, at an abandoned convenience store on, from Craigslist. Yeah, I don't mess with Craigslist at all for anything. I don't even mess with Facebook Marketplace. I don't trust. I don't trust these people. <laughs> There's no telling what you're going to get. Yeah, there's too many weirdos <clears throat> out there, especially in the Austin area. So what we got? What what story do you want to hear next? Because like I said, I can I can do the uh, the one out of Big Ben. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. And then what what next? Is there another one after that? You can we can throw in there. Uh, there's one in North Carolina, right? Oh yeah, that one's pretty crazy. Um, that that there was like a series of events that happened to that one. We'll do the one out in far west Texas real quick, and then we'll get to that one. We have time? Yeah, we got a little bit of time. Okay. The one in Big Ben's not not real long, and I actually just got one recently um, that Black Panther, but I don't have confirmation if it was a Black Panther person. But these people were hiking out in the Big Ben National Park. Very beautiful place, folks, if you're out there, but be careful because there's a lot of deadly animals out there that will kill you. Snakes, venomous spiders, uh, all kinds of stuff. So anyways, uh, they were out there hiking, and there's cougars out there. Oh, yeah, and there's wild hogs. 
and I believe there's Gila monsters out there too. I, I'm not 100. percent I've heard stories. They say that they're not, but they I've heard people say they are. Uh, those are like this venomous lizard that's, that's not supposed to be. I don't think it's supposed to be out in West Texas, but I think they are. But anyway, <clears throat> these people were out there and they were walking around, you know, in the hike or whatever. And this was broad daylight. And they see this, what looks like a, a big cat climb up over a, bo- like a kind of a small boulder, a small, like not, not, I want to call it like a, a boulder, but it was like a really giant rock, you know, and they said it just kind of climbed up over the top of it. And they could see it off in the distance. They said it was about 60 yards away. And they said this thing stood up on two legs on the rock. And they were like, whoa. They, they were like, I can't believe what we're looking at. We're, what we're looking at, he said it looked just like a black jaguar, but it just decided that it wanted to stretch and it stood up on the rock and it was stretched like its arms up and was stretching like how a man stretches itself out. Yeah, like 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 you just woke up from a nap. You just woke up from a nap, and then it said that eventually it just kind of started staring in their direction. Then it crouched down with its front, what would would have been the arms slash front paw legs, whatever. Uh, kind of got down with it with the uh, in a squatting position with the uh, the very feline type legs kind of splayed out, and they just they just s- sat there watching them, and they just said, "Okay," and they turned and like. Walked back down the trail, and as they were leaving, they ran into another couple that was from uh, Sweden or Germany. I couldn't remember what country they said it was. And they told them what was there, and they just go, okay, and they just kept walking. They just ignored them, you know, because they probably go, yeah, okay, whatever. And, you know, and uh, so they're like, all right, whatever, (laughs) you know, keep going. And it was almost dusk, and it was, you know, in in late summer. It was like, uh, I think, late September or something like that. And so they just kept going, and they got themselves out of there. But uh, yeah, that happened uh, in big in the Big Bend area. I got another one that happened in Alpine, and uh, I can get into that one. It's not real long; it's nothing, you know. But it it did involve a an upright uh, feline. Uh, they were driving through Alpine, going toward toward Marfa. Uh, the school saw Ross is out there, so they they were they were driving through there, and th- these people had a a child that actually went to the school. So they dropped her off and they were like going to spend a couple of days. There's some hot springs out there. They were going to go to Fort Davis and go to the McDonald observatory. Very cool place. If you've never been folks. And so they were going to make their way up to Marfa and be out there for the weekend, and then go back into, and, and they, and they actually lived in Ozona. Uh, so they were going to head out and just make a day and make a, a couple of days out there, whatever, take a little trip. Um, and they were, they were right outside of Alpine which is a beautiful place. And they were heading toward uh, Marfa. And as they were driving down the highway right outside of Alpine, they just see this thing that looked like it was on the side of the road. And it was like a black panther looking cat. And they thought, wow, look at that. That's a jaguar. Then it just stands up and runs across the road like a man. And they were like, what the heck did we just see? (laughs) Like, they literally said it just like moving its arms back and forth like a man sprinting. And then it like got down on all fours. And there was another vehicle coming. It wasn't that late at night. It was about 9 o'clock. And so there was another vehicle that came that had to have illuminated it and saw it too. You know, and they were just like, did that thing just get up on two legs and run across the road? And the wife was like, yeah, I think it did. And so that was that. Was that. But they just were like in shock. Uh, God sent me that story way back when I was doing dog man encounters. Uh, because I had I had talked about Marfa, you know. He said I had a weird incident right outside of Marfa and Alpine. If you know where Alpines, I said, yeah, I know where that's at. My grandparents used to live in Marfa and, and been to Alpine many times. I drove a friend of mine out there. They went to school there years ago. Uh, never had anything weird happen, but um, yeah, definitely got some stories of, of that area. So we'll, we'll move on to the uh, North Carolina one. Now this one was in a, in a couple different parts. It was in a, it was in a uh, now. Probably where it's at, it's probably a lot more grown up than it was back then. Uh, this story took place about 15, 20 years ago. And uh, there was a black panther that decided to, to, I guess, basically terrorize a neighborhood for a few days. And uh, this started with some people seeing it, 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 it literally drinking water out of a ditch. But the way that it was sta- it was uh, sitting or standing on the four, on the four legs was bizarre because the front – like there again, you know, the front 
body, upper body, like we were talking about, Anthony, I don't know if we were talking about off air, but, but how that thing climbed the fence. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you know that story where the guy shot at it because you know the people. But this thing was down on, on and, and its back looked like a part man, part cat or something. And they were like, the, the little girl's like, mommy, look at that. Well, the daughter at that time, I think she was like 11 or 12. And she's like pointing at this cat down the ditch. And she said when it turned its its head, she's like, the eyes look human. She's like, I don't know how to describe it. He goes, but it looked like human eyes uh, with a short cat muzzle on it, like a human looking face almost like the, up, up in the eye area. But it was like lower part was like a cat. And she thought, what in the heck am I looking at? And she said it wasn't completely black. It was like a darkish brown, um, blackish brown, whatever. And the tail wasn't completely black either. It was weird. Like it was lighter than the body. And the, the little girl just started crying as they drove past it. And then it just jumped down to the ditch like it was trying to hide. Well, a couple days later, one of the neighbors had, had claimed that they'd seen something run across the road on two legs. He's like, I don't know what it was. We didn't get a good look at the face. And it was too far away up in the, you know. And where they live it's it's like everybody has like two acre plots. It's kind of like that, you know, like the the neighbors each have two to three acres and they live kind of space, spaced out, but they do live kind of close to each other. Uh, for you, Anthony, you probably think of like uh, going out toward South Austin past uh, the Estancia area. Yeah. You know how the, that neighborhood back there, everybody has like an acre and a half or whatever, uh-huh. or kind of like how where we're moving. But uh, anyway, she said, you know, our neighbors are about two or three acres over, you know. And the, the guy says, man, I saw this thing. You know, she said he was an elderly guy, had no reason to lie, and said that this thing had ran across the road on two legs. And he's like, me and my wife said it was black. I couldn't tell what it was, was but it had a tail. And I'm like, what on, what, what on earth has a tail? And, and it, it was like a feline-type tail, you know, uh, rounded at the end, you know, and runs across a road like that. And they couldn't figure it out. Well, the, this, this, uh, the neighbor of the first two people, that was that lived uh, the right toward the front of that area when when you first come in. There's kind of like you got to go down this road, then it goes down for a few miles, and it dead ends to a pasture, like a a field or whatever. Well, the people that live toward the front of that road, closer to the highway, uh, they heard something jumping around on their roof one night. And the husband, you know, he he's like doing his duty. He's like, you know, honey, let me go out there with the gun and see what's going on. And then he goes and he looks, he shines the light, goes all the way around the house. And this was actually Christmas time. <laughs> and he said that that part of the lights were hanging down, the Christmas lights, and they were out. And he thought, wow, that's weird. So then he looks and he, he sees a tree move. And he thought, what the heck was that? And he saw something like leap from the, the house to the tree. But he goes, I, I saw the tree move, but it was real dark, whatever it was that, that jumped. And and this this is a story he told the, the the neighbors that contacted me, and he said that it, that the tree swayed kind of back and forth, and he said I, I shine the light over there, and I see this cat looking thing, and he goes, but I could see it hanging from the branches, and the the, the lower legs were just kind of dangling there, and it was holding itself up, and he goes, the darn thing had like arms like a man, wrapped around one of the branches, and he said this thing just decided to let go. Literally just threw its hands up and let go, and when it, it got down, it kind of stood up. And he said the thing was about seven foot tall, and he said this thing just let out a roar, and he goes, dude, it went through my body. That's what he told the neighbors, and he goes, and then I, I just, I didn't even think about shooting or anything. I just ran inside, told my wife, you know, and she thought I was crazy. She's like, but then one day when she was coming down off the highway and she was turning into our drive, she sees this thing. And it looked like it had a coyote in its mouth, and it was running uh, on all fours. She goes, but then at the last second, it jumped up on two legs and then jumped over the over a fence. Um, and I like literally jumped over. It wasn't like a, a fence; it was a barbed wire fence. But she said it jumped over it with that thing in its mouth, and like like it just put its hands like like weird looking hands and jumped over it. I mean, you know, that's crazy. Uh, another one I got, and, and like I said, I got a bunch of these that I've collected, you know, over the last you know few years, but this one was in LA and it's, like I said, there again, it's not a real long one, but this happened in Los Angeles and actually in Riverside, California. And now Anthony, me and you were just there a couple of years ago. We went through there, that, that, that disgusting place. But yeah, <laughs> but, uh, never step foot in it. It'll be too soon. It was, it was so gross. 
it's a very gross place. But these people, they lived in Riverside, California, and they're nice people. But uh, she was outside, and the dogs were barking, rah, rah, rah. They're going crazy. And she said she sees this black cat-looking thing, like at a, in a standoff with the two German shepherds that they and she had, and they had like a a lab mix, whatever. And she said all three of them were like going at it, and it was swiping at them. And she said, "Honey, there's a." She tells her, her husband, "She's like, honey, there's a black panther in the backyard, in in, in the middle of the in, in Riverside, California." And she's like, "There's this thing. It's like a black panther. You know, it's right there in the backyard." And he goes and he's he looks and he goes, oh my gosh. And then so he goes, runs to try to grab. He has a shotgun he was going to use. I was going to, you know, 12 gauge, you know. So I'm like going back to, to the to the back of the house to go grab it. And, and it was right when I'm coming back, they both see this thing climb up the fence. And he said, dude, how a, just like a man, like if a man put its arms up and just climbed up the fence with the back legs going, you know, which like I said, we've heard this before. And then it just climbed up and then jumped over the fence and the dogs were like right behind it all barking and growling, whatever. And and they were like, did we just see that thing's like arms and back look like a dude? Like, like they were in shock, you know, it had like the musculature, everything of a man, the upper body did and how it climbed over the fence. It was so weird. They were just like, dude, did we just see that? Like, what was that? Like, you know. And that, you know, they asked the neighbors and the neighbors, nobody had seen. It was like two in the morning. They didn't see anything. There was nobody that, you know. Now, I just got this story not too long ago, maybe a month, not even a month ago. It's pretty fresh. So, you know, we've been getting these stories for years, but this one's pretty new. And and I told them, I said, if there's any updates, anybody in the neighborhood got anything, sees anything, send them my way so that I can, you know, we can talk about it, whatever. But uh, I think that's all the time we have for tonight. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. We, we, we definitely, uh, have something going on there with this phenomena. It's not just dog, man. There's, uh, apparently cat people too. Um, and as, as we're sitting here talking, I don't know what we're going to call this one. Cat people. I don't know. (laughs) Black Panther people. I don't, I wouldn't call it feline. I I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Beware of cats. I don't know. (laughs) But, (laughs) but, uh, anyways, Folks, that's all the time we had for tonight. Thank you for everything. And like I said, any donations we get for the the uh, YouTube live chat is going straight to help the food drive to help people. Um, we give away meat every year for those that are less fortunate, people that aren't going to have Christmas. We do. We actually do do a lot. I'm not making that up. We do really try to help people, um, and my company does, and my business partner he chips in. And we we spend a few grand trying to uh, bring as much Christmas as we can to people that are in need and just those that really can't afford to, you know, have, you know, Christmas like 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 everybody else. Like they're, they're not going to have that kind of food. You know what I mean? Like these aren't people that are going to be going and, and some of them are uh, uh, just decent people that, that I think deserve to have, you know, something nice. But for the most part, it's people that are that are in need. Um, so if you, if you feel the, the, if your heart moves you to give or whatever, that's, that's great. Cause whatever we get for the Patreon is going straight into that for the month of December. So thank you for everybody listening for all those people out there that are listening from whatever platform you're listening to us on. Um, just be sure and don't be shooting and throwing bottles at black cats. You never know what they could be doing. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, as fun as it sounds, I don't know. I, don't knock it till you try it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like they, they they might just be black jaguars, but they could also be like a, a, a dude shape shifting. So <laughs> yeah. you know, just take your chances. And the worst part Live is, if up. you shoot it, then it turns back into a man. <laughs> oh, then yeah. you have to tell the authorities, "I'm not kidding. It was a yeah. giant cat. Yeah. Now he's a dead naked guy." <laughs> <laughs> so that's that could be a problem. You hear that 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 uh, Johnny Cash song? Playing, I hung my head. <laughs> yeah, I saw a black cat, man. Yeah. Now he's dead. Yeah, I hung my head. All right, guys, I'll let you go. Uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs>